I don't know why I always say we, like me. I don't know, weird. And oh, you can hear the, haven't opened it yet. Cryptic messages and mind games drove detective Mark, sorry. So I wanna talk about them today because yeah, that's what we do here. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Welcome to yet another <laughs> video of me talking about books that I wanna read <laughs> that I got like, a non-TBR TBR. But anyway, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I have gotten back into series recently and there's so many great books that are out there and I have definitely been guilty of purchasing multiple books in a series before I've even started it or continuing to buy books in a series that I haven't read in a while. But in the case of this pile, these are all books that I have more than one of, except for one exception because it hasn't come out yet. And I haven't started any of these series yet. So these are all books that I genuinely want to read. Obviously it's why I bought them. And in some cases there's like, there's a sequel coming out this year, there's a TV adaptation and there's one of my most favorite authors in the entire world in this pile. So these are books that I wanna prioritize this year and series that I wanna get into. I've also heard such great things about them. So I feel like I'm having like the FOMO vibe is kicking in also. So here we go, series I'm going to read, you can quote me on that, in 2022. Although I'm not gonna read the entire series, but I wanna at least start them. Okay, we're gonna start with one of my most favorite people, Jennifer Hillier, and this is Creep. This is her first book. It is a two book series. I think maybe that the detective in this i don't know if he's in the butcher and shows up in wonderland or he's in this and shows up in wonderland like he's in wonderland and i know he's from a previous book but i'm not sure if it's these but creep was her first book this was the re-released mass market paperback that came out this year or last year and it is a thriller of deadly attraction so in this one, we have a psych professor in Seattle named Sheila, and she's an expert in human behavior and a well-liked educator. But nobody knows the secret she keeps hidden, not even the love of her life, Morris, and she needs it to stay that way because Ethan Wolf is impossible to resist. So he is her grad student, he's brilliant, charming, and seductive as hell. And he's also Sheila's teaching assistant and 16 years younger. They begin an illicit affair. You know nothing good is gonna come of that. And then Morris asks her to marry him. So they're dating, now they're engaged. So she wants to get her life back on track. She's committing to her future with Morris. And Ethan did not take that rejection well. So things are gonna start to come out after this point. I adore Jennifer Hillier so, 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 so much. I'm very excited to go back to the beginning. I have read three of her six books and I wanna dive into the other three before her new book comes out this summer. That is legit my goal, you guys, is to read her entire backlist before her new book comes out in the summer. So we're gonna start at the very beginning with Creep. The next book is currently an AMC Plus TV show, which I am desperate to watch with Lucy Hale. And it is Ragdoll by Daniel Cole. So this is another police, I feel like these are gonna be pretty police heavy because that's not unusual with the series. So in this one we have, oh, another guy, William Wolf Fox. So Wolf, Wolf. <laughs> Let's see how many strings we can tie together in these. So he gets the case of a lifetime. So him and his former partner, Detective Emily Baxter, arrive at a crime scene where a body is made of the dismembered parts of six victims, sewn together, a corpse that becomes known as the rag doll. This is definitely probably not a book to read at night, but we'll see what happens. So they have to identify all six victims, but it's complicated. So Wolf's ex-wife is a popular journalist and she anonymously, anonymously, words, receives a list of names and then dates on which the ragdoll killer plans to strike next. The final name on the list is Wolf. So it says breakneck pace, twisty plot, wicked sense of humor, absolutely unforgettable debut. So I believe there are three in this series, but I'm really excited about it. I'm super intrigued by the TV show. I love me some Lucy Hale, Pretty Little Liars. And it just sounds really, really great. So the fact that this has, it says there's humor in it as well. I just binge watched all three Scream movies, or the first three, I should say. I don't need, I've seen four twice and we're good, <laughs> but 
<laughs> I'm super excited about Scream 5. I'm not gonna go to the movie theaters. I'm hoping it'll be streaming soon, but I was just reminded of that amazing skill of having like this horrifying movie with extreme humor to it at the same time. So the fact that there's humor in this really jazzes me up. And I almost feel like, I've already said this, um, to my friends that I think I want to read this one closer to next. So I'm excited for the series and I'm partially motivated by the fact that I a thousand percent want to watch the show. I don't have AMC plus, but I will get it for this. Yeah. Next up is another debut and this is The Tenant by Katrine Engberg. So I have The Butterfly House. I want to say it's the second one. I always want to say Butterfly Effect. And then the third book in the series is coming out this year and I haven't read any of them, obviously. So this is another detective novel. So two detectives struggling to solve a shocking murder and stop a killer hellbent on revenge. So in this one, we have a young woman is discovered brutally murdered in her own apartment. This one takes place in Copenhagen and they are assigned to the crime and they establish a link between the victim, Julie, and her landlady, Esther, who's a bit too fond of drink and who's the host of raucous dinner parties with her artist friends. Esther is also a budding novelist, and when Julie turns up as a murder victim in the still unfinished mystery she's writing, the link between fiction and real life grows more urgent and more dangerous. So we get the police investigation. I always love me a book where there's a writer element to it. You guys know, I love the inside of this too. It has this beautiful green map. The color on this is stunning. So I have heard that book number two is better than book number one. And you know, sometimes that happens, it's totally fine, but I'm also super excited to get to know these two detectives, to get into this case. Like I said, I love me some writer vibes of it all, and I'm just excited for it. So I want to, I, I keep saying this, I wanna dive into it this year, obviously. That's why we're talking about it. But yeah, I'm excited for this one, big time. Next up is a book that has a sequel coming out this year, and I don't know if it was ever intended to have a sequel or just, Sometimes authors fall in love with their characters and like to revisit them again at a later date. So first book is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I am embarrassed to admit that I haven't read this one yet. I am a big fan of hers, but I have not read her books in a couple of years. I think the last one I read was I Found You, and maybe that was two years ago, but I have Watching You, which I can like get up here, you guys can't see it. Um, and then I also have The Invisible Girl, and I have this, I have so many of her books, you guys, but don't, anyway, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so this book, I believe this is sort of classic Lisa Jewell in that we're gonna get either multiple POVs or multiple timelines or both, and they all weave together, I think. So in this one, our main character is Libby, it's her 25th birthday, and it says she returns home from work to find the letter she's been waiting for her entire life. She rips it open with one driving thought, I'm finally going to know who I am. So she learns who her parents are, and then she also learns that she is the sole inheritor of their abandoned mansion on the banks of the Thames in London's fashionable Chelsea neighborhood. So it says the home, even in its dilapidated state, is worth millions. Everything in Libby's life is about to change. But what she doesn't know is that others have been waiting for this day as well. And although they've been in hiding, they are now heading her way. So deep, dark secrets. So as nearly 25 years ago, police were called to 16 Cheyenne Walk with reports of a baby crying. When they arrived, they found a healthy 10 month old safe and sound in the upstairs bedroom. In the kitchen, three dead bodies, all dressed in black, were seemingly posed next to a hastily scrawled note. The four other children reported to live at Cheyenne Walk were gone. So I have heard so many different things about this book and I just, I don't know why it took me so long but I wanna read it this year. And again, Lisa Jewell just like crushes it on the cover situation as well. So I will pop the second book that's coming out with the details for you guys. I feel like it's coming out this summer maybe, but I'm super excited for it. And I just have been so neglectful of her books. And again, I have loved her from like the beginning of time, literally like when she wrote Ralph's Party a thousand years ago, but I love her turn into more mysterious books. So I'm here for it. And I feel like the suggestion of another book in the series is getting me even more jazzed. So there you go. Next up is a book that I have probably the first three books in this series <laughs> sitting on my shelf and it's Eeny Meeny by M.J. Aldridge. But in all fairness, I think there's five or six books in the series, so I'm only halfway horrible with buying a whole bunch before I read them. No judgment, right? 
So the author quote from Tammy Hogue on the front of this book says, dark, twisted, thought-provoking, couldn't turn the pages fast enough. I mean, dark, twisted, it's like it was made for me. So this is the first in the Detective Inspector Helen Grace series. And in this one, it says two people are abducted, imprisoned, and left with a gun. As hunger and thirst set in, only one walks away alive. A game more twisted than any Helen Grace has ever seen. If she hadn't spoken with the shattered survivors herself, she almost wouldn't believe them. So Helen, of course, has dark secrets. She's familiar with the dark side of life. So this case, and it says like seemingly random victims, more people start to go missing, has her completely baffled. And this is my favorite part. It says nothing is more terrifying than when it all starts making sense. Ah. So yeah, this is like one of many books in a series and I've just heard really dark messed up stuff about it. And Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library was saying in that live um, that she did with Krista and Amanda and Sarah, depending on when you're seeing this, it's gonna be a couple weeks ago now, and people were making book recommendations. Someone had recommended Eeny Meeny as really dark, and then Lindsay mentioned it to me, and then I was like, oh my God, I totally have that book too. <laughs> Why are we not picking this up? So prioritizing it, and again, I've just heard great things about the series, and I have three of them, so I might as well start to read them, right? That's, yeah, that's what we need to be doing here. Again, with the we, me, I need to read this book. And then the last one, which I talked about when I did my shelf, show you what I've got kind of a thing, and I was gonna read it, and oh my goodness, I just am seeing how this cover has like holograms on it when the light hits the back of it. How cool is that? You're not gonna be able to see it. There's like all little symbol holograms on this. Ugh, oh, you learn something new every day. Have you figured out what it is yet? It's Unsub by Meg Gardner. This is the first, now I wanna say a three book series. I only have the first two, so only moderate judgment on this one, but I have not read a Meg Gardner book in forever. I mean, longer than it's been since I've read a Lisa Jewell book. And oh, you can hear the, haven't opened it yet. So this book came out quite a bit ago, I wanna say. Oh no, only 2017. I don't know why I always feel like this book is older than that, but still, whatever, it's fine. So this is sort of based on the Zodiac Killer is my understanding. And I talked about it when I did the shelf tour. I have not seen the movie Zodiac. I've heard, listened to true crime podcasts and such about the Zodiac Killer, but I haven't watched that Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo movie yet, but I want to. But I wanted to read this first, even though I know it's not the same. I don't know why, like in my head that needs to happen. So in this one, we have Caitlin Hendricks. So she's been a narcotics detective for six months when the killer at the heart of all her childhood nightmares reemerges, the prophet, an unsub, what the FBI call an unknown subject. So the prophet terrorized the Bay Area in the 90s and nearly destroyed her father, the lead investigator on the case. So this is definitely giving me Ella Fair Burke, Ellie Hatcher vibes as well with like the father-daughter, police investigation, investigation from the past, investigation in the present. So it says the prophet's cryptic messages and mind games drove detective Mac Hendricks to the brink of madness and Mac's failure to solve the series of ritualized murders, 11 seemingly unconnected victims left with the ancient sign for mercury etched into their flesh was the final nail in the coffin for a once promising career. So we fast forward 20 years, we've got two bodies bearing the same haunting signature of the prophet. And now Caitlin is committed to figuring out what is going on. And it says she ignores her father's warnings as she draws closer to the killer with each new gruesome murder. Is it a copycat or is it really the same person who haunted her childhood? So I am expecting this to be all levels of dark and messed up. Her earlier books that I read, like Dirty Secrets Club, like there was definitely a darkness to them, which I very much enjoy. So I have heard tremendous things about this book and I really do want to read it. And I think, you know, like I said, this police investigation itch that I've been having so much of lately, this is definitely going to fall right into it. And having just finished, or like a couple weeks ago finished Find Me by Ella Fairburk, which isn't an Ellie Hatcher series, but has Ellie in it, sort of rejiggered that father-daughter police investigation past present, how it impacts the family kind of a vibe to it, which kind of puts this higher up on my list. And it was one of the first ones I thought of when I decided to make this video. So there you have it, my gardener. So that's gonna do it for this video. I have 
so many more series that I can pick for this. And rest assured, <laughs> there will be more of these kinds of videos. But I have like Sarah Bladell, I have a whole bunch of her books. And then there's more series that I also wanna continue with that I've already started. So that in and of itself is like another series. But let me know if you guys have read any of these books or if there's series that you guys are jazzed to dive into this year. I just, there's something about discovering a series when it's already out that I really enjoy because assuming I'm going to love all of these, which I am banking on the fact that I'm going to, I love being able to just compulsively read them and not have to impatiently wait for the next book to come out. So anyway, I will let you guys know what I think of these when I read them. And as always, let me know what you guys are interested in and what you guys are reading these days and we can do all the chit chat down below. But thanks so much for hanging out today, you guys, and I will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.